Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. Is saying Christ is King, specifically to non-believers, specifically to Jewish people, problematic? Well, I know this may shock some of you, especially those of you who maybe haven't been active on social media, but according to some, including certain people that I otherwise agree with on a lot, the answer actually is yes. And you're probably wondering how that all happened, how we got here to a place where people are being accused of anti-Semitism for saying Christ is king, but let's, let's unpack it all. And by the way, just a little, I suppose, disclaimer, since we are gonna be talking about religion and faith, which I think is just inherently polarizing, if nothing else, I am very much the type of person who believes that we can have disagreements, including about religion, and still be friends. And I certainly believe that even though we disagree in one area, that doesn't mean that we can't work together where we do agree. And you guys know, if you watch my videos, I am very quick to tell people when I think they're a bad person, like when I think they're just X, Y, or Z. I'm not, I'm not a delicate wallflower in that regard, but trust me when I say that even if you come away from this video thinking that I'm wrong and that we very much are on opposite ends of this, that doesn't mean that I, I think you're a bad person. And so my hope for everyone as we enter this conversation is that we do so with maturity, with an open heart, certainly an open mind, and with the understanding that disagreement is not the same thing as prejudice, as bigotry, and it's certainly not the same thing as hate. All right, so crisis king, anti-Semitism, where did this supposed link all begin? As far as I can tell, this actually goes back to November uh, to the pretty public Twitter disagreement between Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. And actually there's a really good, a Jerusalem Post article that I think does a great job breaking the situation down. And we have more to talk about, but first I do want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, Aura. Have you guys ever tried Googling yourself? I haven't, trust me, the results aren't always pretty. Seriously, try it for yourself. Try searching your name, your email, or heck, even your home address, and you may be shocked to see what the results are. You may be wondering to yourself, hang on, how did all this personal information about myself get onto the internet? Well, you see, the problem is that data brokers sell your information to people like scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, your email address, your home address, your health records, your relatives, it's probably all out there. And that is exactly why I have been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me exactly which data brokers are out there selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests on my behalf. In fact, through using Aura, I found that at least 20 different data brokers were selling my personal information. Really cool, guys. Thanks for that. And by the way, cleaning up this information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, which trust me was a lot, but it also protects me from hackers who could potentially use this information to help them get access to my social media accounts or even commit identity theft. And by the way, Aura also also does so much more than just protect me and my family from threats we can't see. I also get other features through them like a VPN, antivirus, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, so many things and more. All of that without having to download extra apps or create extra accounts. It's really easy to set up and best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. And you may already have one or two of these tools already, but without Aura, which comprises everything, it's kind of like locking your front door while leaving your back door wide open. Aura is always on doing the hard work, keeping me safe so I don't have to think about it. Aura is always on doing the hard work for me so I can focus on other things. I value my privacy and I value yours as well. So head on over to aura.com slash Lauren Chen. Again, that is aura, A-U-R-A.com slash Lauren Chen to start your two week free trial. Also linked below in the description. And a huge thank you to Aura for not only their amazing product, but also for sponsoring this video. It says Candace Owens tweets crisis king in tiff with Ben Shapiro. So you guys probably remember that viral video of Ben Shapiro uh, at a private event saying that Candace Owens' behavior in regard to Gaza was disgraceful. Well, apparently shortly after that clip began circulating, Candace posted this. It's a quote from the Bible. It says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So if you guys remember, Candace got a lot of flack after she posted that. A lot of people were trying to assign specific intent behind that post. Uh, intent, by the way, that Candace herself never clarified or confirmed either way. Ben, as it's explained here, then responded by saying, Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means quit. Candace then responded, you have been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now, and we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion, but you 
you cross a certain line, when you come for scripture and read yourself into it, I will not tolerate it. To which she then followed up with the now viral, Christ is King. Now people were already calling Candace Owens anti-Semitic to be clear, but after that little exchange, uh, the accusations I think really doubled down. Some people were saying that the fact that she said this Christ is King specifically to Ben, who is Jewish, uh, that in itself was anti-Semitic. It was at the very least a dog whistle. But you know what? A lot of Christians did not see the situation that way. A lot of people saw what Candace was doing, you know, proudly sharing Bible verses and, you know, sticking to her faith, sticking to her convictions in light of people saying all these slanderous things about her. A lot of people actually found that really inspirational to the point that uh, since then, Crisis King has been trending on Twitter really pretty regularly. So that's kind of been going on for months. Enter the fact that, as I'm sure you guys have all heard, Candace Owens and The Daily Wire have recently ended their relationship. Now, there's been a lot of speculations as to the exact reasons why uh, the two parties are no longer working together, but for the most part, people like Jeremy Boring, who's the CEO of Daily Wire, uh, Ben Shapiro, and Candace herself, they haven't really said much about the subject, but that line of silence, which is understandable, I think when a separation like that happens, A, it's hard to toe the line and still remain professional, but also transparent, and I think there are other Daily Wire hosts who, frankly, have not been involved in the situation at all, who are probably feeling pressure to come out one way or another, and that's that's just uncomfortable, and I understand the, the hesitancy there. I've been in similar positions myself when it's like someone leaves a network and I don't understand why that happened at all because I wasn't privy to any conversations between them and the network, but it's like, I'm still expected to say something. And it's just like, yeah, I'm, I don't want to drag anyone else into the situation. However, Andrew Clavin, for better or worse, he decided to dedicate an entire like 40 minute segment of his own show to what happened, during which and I invite you all to watch this segment yourself in its entirety. It's a bit long to go over for this video, but to be clear, Andrew Clavin in that segment does accuse Candace Owens of racial hatred against Jewish people. And he also seemed to imply, even though he denies this on, on Twitter, but to me, it's pretty clear. He seems to imply that the reason why Europe was ever great was because of Judaism and the accomplishments of Jews. And that after World War II, after so many Jews in Europe were killed. That's why Europe has declined. A strange argument, not heard of before. But he also very interestingly in that segment talks about the idea and affirms the idea that yes, Crisis King is being used as an anti-Semitic dog whistle. Blood libel that, that you know, Jews eat Christian children. You know, that's a, a dog whistle. And you start to refer in this kind of clever way to certain group of people in Hollywood corrupting blacks and killing Michael Jackson. You're, you're not allowed to then put on an innocent look and say, well, I'm just saying there's certain people, just a like few, you know, it's not, I'm just saying, you know, you're messing with us. You're messing. I just want to be clear. Um, earlier in this segment, Andrew Clavin specifically calls out black gangs and black crime. So in my opinion, it's a little bit hypocritical of him to say like, yeah, you know, I, I have no problem calling out black crime because there are problems in black culture. Later, he criticizes Candace Owens for criticizing, I mean, the actions of Jewish people or people who happen to be Jewish. You can't really have things both ways, but in any case. ...with us and everyone knows it and no one is fooled except those people who want to pretend to be fooled because they hate the Jews. The biggest truth that Candace told in that way, that I find, again, and this is not personal animus toward her, but I find difficult to excuse this when anybody does it. The, the tr truth that hid wickedness that I thought was the most wicked truth to use was the truth that Christ is king. It is almost exactly 20 years since I acknowledged the kingship of Christ in my life and over the universe as well. He kind of goes into his own testimony here, not really pertinent to the conversation. My king is king of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes, and that to me is specifically wicked. You know, when you spit that... 
Okay, so there's so much to say in this segment. I could really dedicate an entire video or even live stream to going through everything that he says that is, I'm sorry, but dishonest. And that that pains me to say because I've been a fan of Andrew Clavin for a long time. And, and it's just, it's disturbing to me to see him spout so much false doctrine when it comes to Christianity. And also just, I mean, basically leftist talking points when it comes to bigotry being whatever I say it is as well. And I would even go so far as to say that there's actual Jewish supremacy in this segment. But to be clear, it seems to me like what Andrew Clavin is basically saying here is that saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic and hateful because the people who are saying it are implying that God has abandoned Jews who are his chosen people. The argument that I get from Andrew, and we're going to go other people who are making similar ones, is that basically if you believe that Jews do need Christ, as every person on this planet does, and you choose to say Christ is king uh, to remind them that they currently do not accept Christ, that is innately anti-Semitic. By the way, I mean, I don't intend this video to be like uh, apologetics or a discussion of Christian theology. I want to focus more on like the social issues here, but I just want to say real quick so people understand my position that yes, the Jews were chosen by God for a specific purpose to bring forth the Messiah, which they did do. But when it comes to being God's chosen people or God's people, I think it's pretty obvious that someone cannot reject Christ, reject God, but also claim to be of him. And it's just, it is a biblical fact that no one can come to the father save through the son. And Christianity, thank goodness, I think is the most egalitarian religion out there when it comes to racial issues. There is no slave, no free man, nor Jew, nor Greek, because we are all one in Jesus Christ and we all need Jesus Christ. For some reason, Andrew Clavin has taken the approach that maybe reminding Jewish people of that fact is innately hateful. But we continue. He's at Ben Shapiro, my friend, Ben Shapiro. And, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. To be clear, I don't think that joy and freedom are the only reasons why we should want people to find Christ. I think we should want people to find Christ because it is what is true. It is what is commanded of us. It is what is just. Putting that out there. I don't want to nitpick everything. Let's keep going. When I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I, life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven. Honk, you know, yes, the name is Jesus. I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel- that this, this is what I mean when I say, it kind of seems like Andrew Clavin believes saying Christ is king to Jews is hateful because Jews do not need Christ. Am I misunderstanding it? It seems like what he just said is that maybe God doesn't want Ben Shapiro to come to Christ because his family would be hurt by it, you know, because uh, he's very influential in the Jewish community. We don't want to hurt that. And it's like, I'm sorry, but this is not Christianity here. Basically, my takeaway from that segment regarding the whole crisis uh, king thing is that Andrew Clavin believes it's anti-Semitic because Jewish people don't like it. But here's the thing, the definition of anti-Semitism is not upsetting a Jewish person, just like the definition of sexism is not upsetting a woman. The definition of racism is not upsetting a black person. Anti-Semitism is prejudice and hatred against Jewish people, let us be clear. It is not prejudice or hateful to tell a Jewish person or any other person that Christ is king. It is what we are commanded to do as Christians. Now this brings us to the very fiery discourse that's been happening around the issue on X. So I wanna bring you through some tweets by Joel Berry, who's with the Babylon Bee. He is Christian and he is also of the camp that saying Christ is king can be anti-Semitic. As you can see here, uh, posting people burning fiery agony in hell, he captions the image, but we said Christ is king on the internet. To be clear, I don't think merely saying Christ is king uh, without believing it with full conviction gives anybody salvation or redemption or anything like that. But Joel says here, yes, Christ is king. He's my king. I tremble at the thought, but it would also be great if we didn't allow the precious name of our Holy Savior to become a Nazi coded catchphrase for Nick Fuentes' army of dorks. This 
this is what I'm not seeing here. A Nazi coded catchphrase. What is the catchphrase code for? Is it code for the fact that Jews do not believe in Christ? Because that's not Nazism. That's just a fact that is true. Uh, is it a code for we think Jews are bad? I'm sorry. I, I don't see an enough evidence of that or any evidence of it at all, certainly not from Candace Owens. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there's no random accounts probably out there with like five followers who will say like, F, you know, this group, uh, curse word, slur, crisis king, finish it off with that to troll. I'm sure that happens. But when I see social media posts proclaiming crisis king, that is not the majority. It's not even the plurality of what I am seeing. He retweeted uh, this post by a person named Abby Libby. Black Lives Matter is an obviously true statement, which is nevertheless code for be less white and burn everything down. Uh, is it code for that? I thought the problem with Black Lives Matter is that they were actually an organization, not just a movement, but a specific organization that was trying to push communism. But it says crisis king is an entirely true statement that is currently being used by a few bad actors to taunt and condemn Jews who they hate and blame for all of the ills of the world. They will answer for this to Christ the king. Okay, here's the thing that I don't think people making this argument understand. Um, Black Lives Matter is not a taunt. You cannot taunt me by saying Black Lives Matter, even though I'm very critical of the movement and the organization, because ultimately Black lives do matter and the phrase in and of itself is not offensive to me. Now I have issue with all the other stuff that you're doing, you know, trying to destroy the nuclear family, uh, funneling money from well-meaning donors. I have issue with all of those actions, but the phrase Black Lives Matter is not problematic in and of itself. And that's why I don't get offended by it. I'm not gonna uh, say that people who say it are innately anti-white. That is what is happening with people who say Christ is king though. They are being accused of anti-Semitism. If someone is simultaneously actually being hateful, let's condemn those actions. But the problem with them is not saying Christ is king. Just because a racist person does X, Y, or Z, that does not mean that X, Y, or Z is the problem. There are a great many well-meaning Christians who are failing to discern what's going on here and tweeting crisis king because they think the phrase itself and the truth of it have been declared anti-Semitic and off limits. This is deeply untrue. Please stop listening to the bad actors trying to frame their hatred as piety and those calling out their unbiblical behavior as persecutors. Joel Berry says, are you saying Christ isn't king? Are you saying black lives don't matter? Same devilish tactic used by the godless revolutionaries on the far left and far right. Take a truth, turn it into a mantra, use it as a cloak for evil. But what is the cloak for evil that saying Christ is king is trying to cover up? Is it trying to convert Jewish people? Because that's not evil. That's actually what we should be doing because Jews, uh, like everyone once more, must come to Christ. Their knees will bow. We all need Christ. And then we have Seth Dillon, who I think is the owner of the Babylon Bee. Yeah. He says, not everyone is hiding what they mean by it very well in terms of crisis king. This one account says, uh, you know, crisis king, clearly uh, some, some nasty things said to whoever he was replying to that I don't support and that Christ would not support. But again, the problem isn't this first part crisis king. It's this last part. It's kind of like how people try to it's kind of like how certain leftists try to demonize milk as being like racist or white supremacist just because white supremacists like to drink milk. It's like, no, the milk is not the problem here and white supremacists can drink it. It doesn't affect the milk itself. People being hateful and then also saying Christ is king does not change the meaning, the good news that Christ is king. And I also want to point out here, it seems to me that the people who think that saying Christ is king to Jews is anti-Semitic and the people who don't think that Jews have the same uh, need to come to Christ or same relationship with Christ that other people do, it's basically a circle. Okay, Andrew Clavin, first example of that. Joel Berry, another example of that here. Christ's kingship, he says, does not hang on the number of bros who declare it on X. I agree. There are, however, souls in the balance, including Jews who might believe in and receive Christ. I don't want to stand before God with their blood on my hands blood on there. What? Because I vainly use his name to scorn lost souls and shut the kingdom of heaven in their faces. Christ is king. That declaration is not a condemnation. It is an invitation. It is literally the good news. And guess what? Even if, even if someone says it with bad intent, the good news shared with bad intent is still good news. And what's kind of ironic is that despite his tweet, it seems like Joel Berry in a way also understands this because he says, I love that the internet spent Palm Sunday talking about the phrase Christ is king. There was disagreement on the how, when, and who of saying it but there was no disagreement on whether it's true because it is, and we all know it 
pretty cool. Yes, exactly. Look, I believe that, you know, Christ is king, whether we proclaim it on Twitter or not, but simultaneously, I think there does need to be a revival of Christian fervor, of Christian consciousness. And I've, I've seen people say, don't turn Christ is king into some mantra or rallying cry, but it's like, why not? Because it should be a rallying cry to proclaim the gospel, to stand and be proud and bold in your Christian faith. What better rallying cry could there be for Christians? And you know what? To that end, look here, Christ is King is trending in the United States with 114,000 posts. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, like for people who are saying that this is not useful, this is needlessly alienating, there is an actual genuine Christian sentiment behind this. You are wrong. I'm sorry, but you are wrong. We can disagree with it. Doesn't mean I hate you. But I feel like there, for some Christians, and this has been true for a long time, the the fear of offending, the fear of alienating is stronger than the desire to stand firm in the faith. And I say that as someone who I'm, I'm not much of an evangelist. It's not a strength that I have, but it's like, shouldn't Christ as King be a call to action for Christians and affirmation for Christians? I think by their fruits, you shall know them. Okay. Christ is King trending on Twitter, 114,000 posts. Okay, 114,000 posts. Who knows how many millions of people saw that message? We also, interestingly enough, even have Muslims proclaiming that Christ is King entertained. As a Muslim, it warms my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christian declarations, Christ is King. And I pray Christianity regains its strengths and protects its societies against the pervasive and constant erosion of morality by the devotees of Satan. Says, if you accept everything, you stand for nothing. We also have Sneeko, another Muslim, proclaiming Christ is King. And by the way, guys, if you're not familiar with Islam, Jesus is considered a holy man and a prophet in Islam, probably second only to Muhammad. Uh, Mary is probably the most respected woman in the Quran. I'm not saying that, you know, Muslims are Christians. There are theological differences there, but still, if this proclamation is uniting us in the very least that Christ is king and we can kind of perhaps even reach Muslims further with the idea that Christ is not only king, but divine, this is just so many wins, right? With this message. But strangely enough, the people who don't like Christ as king they see the fact that now even Muslims are proclaiming it, not, not as a sign, as a symbol of how it is true and how the message is working. No, but that also somehow means it's bad. I'm not even kidding. It boggles the mind. Here, Abby Libby, who from what I can see just has really bad takes. Muslims are saying Christ is king tonight, not because they would ever bow to Jesus as God. They do disagree that Jesus is God. That is a real theological difference with Muslims. I will, you know, not hide that fact. But instead of understanding the commonalities that Islam does, does have with Christianity in regard to venerating Jesus. No, according to Abby Libby, it's also the Muslims being anti-Semitic. So everything now about the proclamation of Jesus, whether it's from Christians or Muslims, it's just, we are tied together, not in our, our shared love of Christ, but in our hatred of Jews. According to Abby Libby, it says they recognize that right now it's code for F the Jews. Wake up, Christians. Violation of commandment three has gone viral on X. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And by the way, this is how I know, frankly, that a lot of the people who are slamming Christ as king, they aren't actually genuinely concerned about, oh, how are we best going to bring people to Christianity? Because if they were, they would see Muslims proclaiming Christ as king and be excited about it because, hey, we could bring them over to Christ. But no, instead, let's be clear. This is very much about not offending the sensibilities of Jewish people. And you know who makes that very clear? None other than the Daily Wire CEO, Jeremy Boring. He wrote this long post on the issue, how is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic the same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism? Interesting. It's like asking how does a shovel become a murder weapon when it is used to murder someone? This isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Saying Christ is king is not innately anti-Semitic. At least we got that there. It's all about how a thing is used. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist if I say it to my three-year-old when she's refusing her dinner. If I start saying it as a response to X post by black commentators I don't like, it has taken on a meaning beyond what is innate. It says, in other words, it is cognitively racist, not denatively racist. Okay, but there, there's a difference there. Saying uh, eat some cornbread to a black person is racist because it assumes the false statement that all black people eat cornbread, okay? Saying Christ is king to a Jewish person is not anti-Semitic because 
Christ is king. That is a statement of fact that is true for everybody, Jew or non-Jew. And I'll even go so far as to say, saying it specifically to a Jewish person because they are Jewish is also not anti-Semitic because it is not anti-Semitic to proclaim Christ's kingship to a non-believer. That's not bad faith. That's not hateful. That is evangelism, which Christians are called to do. He says, so too, Christ as king may be anti-Semitic in connotation while not in denotation when it is being used to express anti-Semitism. Again, what exactly is the anti-Semitism here? Let's let's go back to the idea of the shovel. Okay, a shovel is not innately a murder weapon, but it's bad when you use a shovel to hit somebody. They've been slapped in the face with a shovel. That's a bad thing. If I say Christ is king to a Jewish person, regardless of the intent behind it, what is the outcome? That a Jewish person has heard that Christ is king? This is what does not make sense. If someone is so offended by the idea that Christ is king that it can be used as a cudgel against them, then that, that seems like a them problem because offense is always taken, not given. Okay, he says, when did this become so? It has always been so. It has always been potentially anti-Semitic to tell a Jewish person Christ is king. Uh, is it so? Yes, innately. So it, he says it's not innately anti-Semitic, but then he kind of... Uh, pivots on that? I don't know. He says, additionally, saying Christ is king for an evil purpose, like using it as a weapon to express your hatred or disdain for Jews, is a grave sin. Okay, I disagree that it's being used to express hatred or disdain for Jews. I think some people are specifically saying it to Jews because they do not accept that Christ is king, but that does not equate to hatred of Jews. It is the recognition that Judaism and Christianity are separate and distinct religions, and that people who subscribe to Judaism like anyone who subscribes to a non-Christian religion, they are in need of Christ. He says it plainly violates the third commandment. Uh, Thou shalt not carry forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I disagree that using, you know, saying Christ is king to a non-believer, specifically because they are a non-believer, is using the Lord's name in vain. He says, surely if I rape and murder someone like Hamas did, and all the while I shout at them, Christ is king or God is great, we would agree that I have committed three grievous sins, not two. Rape, yes, murder, yes, but also implicating God in the first two crimes. Okay, but what crimes are people implicating God in when they say Christ is king to a Jew? Like if there's actual anti-Semitic posts going on, like, you know, the one highlighted, oh, you nasty Jew. Let's talk about that and condemn that specifically. I see people who are literally just saying Christ is king, okay? That's not a crime. That's not anti-Semitic. And by the way, as Lizzie Marbach, who I think is great, I recommend you give her a follow. As she also pointed out, this has nothing to do with Groypers. Like the idea that, oh, Christ is king. It's about anti-Semitism. It's not about Nick Fuentes. It's not about Candace Owens. It's not about Groypers. Uh, it is about undermining Christianity. As she points out, people have been trying to paint Christ supremacy as anti-Semitic for months now. Okay, remember, Lizzie Marbach is the person who said that there is no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone. Max Miller, okay, says this is one of the most bigoted tweets I've ever seen. Delete it. Okay, you've gone too far. Taylor Marshall said, I'm praying that Ben Shapiro finds faith in the only true king of the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bethany Mendel, apparently that's anti-Semitism. The real issue that people have here isn't anti-Semitism, actual hatred or bigotry of Jews. It's Christians realizing that Jews, like anyone else, need Christ, and that also that we as Christians should be bold in our faith. And this brings us to and I'm going to finish off this video. It's been a while. This is a long one, I know, uh, with a tweet from Candace Owens that I think is so bang on, but she's being smeared <laughs> because of it, of course. She says, the reason why some people believe that with enough insistence, they can convince American Christians that the basic truth, Christ is King, is actually anti-Semitic is because they have been successfully spiking <laughs> the ball on Christianity for the past 60 years. Truth inch by inch by pretending to be our friends and making us fearful of having the media project us as overzealous is how they have scored so many wins. It's how mocking Christ has become commonplace in Hollywood. Yes, absolutely. For everyone who says, oh, this is actually making Christianity less popular, less appealing. I, I just want to remind you that as Christians have become more quiet about their faith, they've become more sensitive to sharing the gospel and proclaiming truths like Christ is King, Christianity has dwindled. It has not grown. So I am looking, I am deeply searching for all the people out there who have been brought to Christ through Christian tibbenness. Where are they? I want to know. And I, I brought this point up on, on Twitter, actually. For all of the times that Christians are told to sit down with their faith, don't share it, don't be bold, don't offend. You know who don't care about that? Muslims. When was the last time you heard a Muslim say, oh, I don't want to talk about, uh, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not going to talk about the supremacy of the Quran because I don't want to step on any toes. Guess who wins the most converts every single year? And it's not even close. 
Muslims. Okay, people are attracted to conviction and they are attracted to truth. I'm not saying everyone needs to be bold. Different approaches work for different people. People have different personalities. The issue I have is when we are told we cannot be bold because it is offensive. Anyway, Candace says, the reality is that they accuse us of what they are guilty of. They hold contempt for Christianity. The reality is that Christ consciousness is rising throughout the world. And any person who is attempting to use methods of psychology to make people pause before they profess their faith is not on the side of goodness. Amen. And actually for this, uh, this person says, has Candace joined a cult? What the heck is Christ consciousness? Consciousness of Christ's divinity, uh, consciousness that we as Christians, we exist in a world uh, where we are being persecuted. We are being targeted. There are people who don't want us to share our faith. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter. Obviously I had a lot to say. I'm guessing this is going to be a pretty long video, but as always, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think the allegations of anti-Semitism, when it comes to people saying Christ is King, do you think that's fair? And do you think like I do that there is a resurgence of Christian zeal going on right now, specifically among young men, because that's definitely what I think is unfolding right now. And I'm not going to fight it. I think it is a good thing. And I think historically speaking, the church has gone further where young men have been at the forefront of, of trying to reach new people, of defending the faith. So I, I don't want to come in here as a woman, especially, uh, and try to tell them to settle down. Don't be so loud. Don't be so outspoken. In any case, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.